All right, guys. So I get a lot of uh, I see a lot of questions online about how do you um, how do you scale a helmet to fit your head. Um, now there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So I have a very simple way. I tend to use Tinkercad, which is free software. Um, so in this example, I've got a helmet. This is a clone pilot helmet from Chris, the prop guy. So give him uh, thanks for providing it. Um, so I've got this file. Now Tinkercad does limit the size of the file that you can import. So sometimes you may have to just import part of it or um, or try and you know simplify it maybe in uh, in Mesh Mixer or something. Uh, what you can also do is you can do the same thing I'm about to do in your uh, slicer software, which will accept you know a file pretty much any size I think. Um, the only difference is you're not be able to, to take advantage of the transparencies. So in this example, what I've done is I've downloaded this head off a of Thingiverse. I can't recall exactly where I found it. You'll have to do a little searching, but basically it was a mannequin. So all I did was I basically chopped off the head and I resized the head to the dimensions of my own head. So in this case, you know. Chin to top is 228 um, millimeters, you know, side to side is 182, and back to back is, um, you know, 226 roughly. So just through trial and error, I was able to do this. Now, you may need some help, someone with a tape measure to help do it. I find that trying to measure your own head accurately can be difficult, as long as they know what you need. You need top to bottom, left to right, and then front to back, right? So then what you do is you scale the 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 mannequin head to whatever size that you are and then you can import your uh, helmet file so I'm gonna just take this and drag it over top so I'm gonna use the nose as a reference try and get it roughly centered and then what I can do is actually reach inside grab the mannequin head until the eyes are looking through the visor right and on the outset I'm like well it's a big file but uh, yeah it looks like it'll work but what I can do to make it a little bit easier is I can actually take the helmet and make the helmet transparent. So if I look inside, I can see that, okay, I got to, you know, to make this so my nose isn't touching the visor, I got to move my head back a little bit. Um, side to side seems to be lots of room. Front to back, lots of room. And you can always tell when there's a collision. So if I take this helmet, for instance, and I move it down, you can see that line that occurs when it touches the inside surface of the helmet. So what then I would do is I would take this and say, okay, and I've kind of pre-done this beforehand, but I'm going to take this and go, um, you know, I'm going to say it's going to be 320 um, top to bottom. So I'm going to scale this, you know, in all in all axes. And then I'm going to look here. I'm going to take my head again, take my little mannequin head, move it inside, you know, maybe move it just so that there's, you know, nice view through the visor and look at it again. And what I can see now is that there's some room inside, but not a ton of extra room. And then what I can do, because clone helmets are notoriously tough for this, I can actually move the head down to the opening of the helmet. And I can say, okay, so if I want to squeeze my nugget into this helmet, let's say I'm deciding this is a good size. I want to make sure I can actually get my head in here without having to make it in multiple parts. So what I can do is move that forward and see here that I can just sort of get my nose through. Um, in this case, I would actually say I would actually use this size. I can always Dremel it out a little bit more if I really need to after I 3D print it. Um, the other option, of course, is, you know, you put your helmet on, you sneak your nose in first, then you pivot the helmet on. So anyone who's worn at least have helmets, you know, sometimes you have to do it back and forth. The only thing that's missing here is my, the, I wear glasses, so whether or not my glasses would fit. But the reality is not every helmet is going to be able to fit your glasses. So, um, you know, if you wanted to make it extra big, you could uh, so that your helmet would fit, but then you might end up with an oversized helmet. So... Uh, I'm going to say that this is about right, and then I can now take these dimensions and figure out in my slicer, okay, what percentage uh, of scale do I need? In this case, I think I worked it out with this helmet. I would actually scale it to 96%, which is, I mean, the difference between 96 and 100 is actually noticeable. It's an extra, it definitely would make it less bulky if I wanted to wear it. So that's my method. Um, pretty simple. Like I said, you can do all of this in a, in your slicer if you want. 
but I find this to be a nice simple method. So long as you can, you know, get your helmet file imported into Tinkercad, it does take a little while, but you can do it. And especially it's helpful if you can make it transparent like this so you can see what you're working with. All right, guys, thanks. Hope it helps.